my name is Stefan Trolovich, and welcome to part three of my cap table series. If you haven't already, I suggest you watch parts one and two first, which I'll hopefully link above, assuming I learned how to use YouTube. But anyways, part three of this series is by far my favorite because it really ties in the things we learned in part one and two. In part one, you saw a detailed cap table that had founders, employees, and an option pool. Now, we're going to make things more complex by adding other investors, by creating a new class of stock with Series A preferred shares, and we're also going to expand the option pool. But from part two, we had two angel investors who invested in the form of a convertible note. We're now in part three, we're finally going to go behind the mechanics of how those notes eventually transform into equity and how many shares we ultimately issue. All of that and more right now in Excel. Let's start with our Series A inputs table, which gives us the details of who's investing in the Series A, what's the valuation, and how much cash are we receiving. Starting at the top, the date of the funding is indeed January 1, 2017, as we thought in part two. For marker number one, we have the pre-money valuation of our business, which is how much is the company worth today prior to receiving the Series A cash? And this is set essentially with a negotiation between the company and the Series A investors. Moving on to marker number two, our Series A investors wanted us to expand the option pool. If you remember from part one, our company's option pool was set at 100,000 common options, and they wanted us to expand it by another 150,000 options before the Series A investment. And the reason it happens before the Series A investment is because the current founders, employees, investors are going to get diluted, but not the Series A investors. It's simply a tool that gives the Series A investors better economics with this deal. Moving on to marker number three, this is the shares prior to the A round. And it's ultimately how many fully diluted shares did we have prior to this investment, plus the option pool expansion of 150,000 shares up here. And if you remember from part one, we had a million shares on a fully diluted basis, and we're simply adding the 150,000 common options from the option pool expansion, giving us a total of 1.15 million. And then lastly, for marker number four, this is a simple calculation of the share price, which is calculated as the pre-money valuation of $4 million divided by the 1.15 million shares prior to the A round. For the rest of the Series A inputs table, we're going to look at the difference between Series A cash and Series A value. And there are a few small differences. Starting with marker number five, this is just noting that we did receive $150,000 in cash from convertible notes from the two investors. But you'll see that angel investor number one decided to invest an additional $50,000 in straight equity as part of the Series A. So this $50,000 has no interest and no discount like the convertible notes from part two have here. As part of the Series A, we have three investors who in totality decided to invest $2 million. So in total, if we include the angel investors, we received $2.2 million in Series A cash, which includes the convertible notes from part two. Looking at marker number seven, here we're going to see that the only difference between Series A cash and Series A value will be for the original convertible notes, which we had in part two. And that's due to the interest and the discount given for these convertible loans. And the angel investor number one value here of 115,000 was simply what we linked in part two, which is the value of the convertible note is the Series A principal plus interest plus the discount, which is 115K for angel one and 57K for angel number two. And this is just a straight link here to this tab. As for the rest of the Series A investors and the new money coming in, the Series A value of 2.05 million here is the same as what it is for cash up here. We're only changing value in cash for those original convertible notes from part two. We eventually get a total Series A value of 2.223 million, which is slightly larger than the $2.2 million received in cash. And lastly, for marker number nine, we can calculate our post-money valuation, which is as simple as the pre-money valuation of $4 million plus the total Series A value of 2.223 million and we eventually arrive at a $6.2 million post-money valuation. Now that we're done with inputs, we're going to go through the same process that we went through in part one, which is updating our detailed cap table. You'll notice that we have different sections now, one with common stock and one with Series A preferred shares. One place where I wanna bring your attention is marker number 10. 
And note that the Series A option pool expansion of 150,000 common options remains in the common stock section. Even though it happened at the same time of the Series A fundraising, we ultimately give common shares to employees. So this remains in this section here. On to marker number 11. This is where we finally calculate how many Series A preferred shares are issued to angel investor number one and angel investor number two. And this is as simple as finding the total Series A value for angel investor number one, which is this 165,000 here. And we're going to divide it by the share price set at the Series A of $3.48. That ultimately gives us over 47,000 Series A preferred shares given to angel investor number one. And lastly, here on the right side, marker number 12, this is now the fully diluted total securities in the company, which went from, if you remember, 1 million in part one of the series, which after everything that our company has gone through is now at almost 1.8 million total securities on a fully diluted basis. And as always, this number to the right should be 100%. Coming back to the top of the tab, same as part one, we have our cap table summary. As you see below, our cap table is getting a bit more dense with more rows and columns. So this again is a nice place where we can summarize the amount of common shares and preferred shares owned by founders, employees, the total option pool, and all of our investors, which you'll see here. That's it guys. Now that you've seen parts one through three, you really should have a good basic understanding of cap tables, especially early on in a company's life cycle. Now you should be able to take the same Excel sheet and do the exact same stuff that I did on screen. And if you want to do that, I'll put a file in the description below. And as always, if you do have a suggestion on how I can improve these videos or even change the format or new topics for me to cover, do let me know about how I can make them more useful for you. Take care.